In the part two of the tutorial on scalar fields, we will convert coordinates to scalar fields, apply some fin filtering on the scalar field, convert scalar field to coordinates. We will also compute the gradient of a scalar field, perform some uh, scalar field arithmetic, and at the end, we will discover a nice function of cloud compare, which consists in uh, interpolating a scalar field from one cloud to another cloud. No scalar field is currently selected on my sample dataset, and I will create a new one using the, using the coordinates of the points. To do that, I simply have to click on Edit here, select Scalar Fields, and select the option Export Coordinates to Scalar Fields. The choice Z has been pre-selected by Cloud Compare, and I click OK. And here I get quickly an overview of the topography. You can see in the histogram the values of the, the Z coordinates, which uh, go from 365 up to 929. You can adjust the color map if you want, and you can also, with the bullets of the histogram, select areas of interest for you. For example, if you want to look at top of the hills here, or if you want to have a look at the lower part of the topography here, close to the river. The inverse operation is also possible in Cloud Compare, and we will see how to do that. At first, I will build raster from my uh, original data here. I click on raster. I will uh, leave the option step one meter as the grid size. Active layer height grid values. Cell height will be set to the min. And I click on update grid. I generate the cloud. Okay. I will clone this cloud. Okay. And what I can do now is to try to filter a little bit the values of the current active scalar field, which is a height grid values. That I click on edit, scalar fields, ocean filter. And here the parameter you have to fill is the size of the spherical neighborhood, which will be used by Cloud Compare to apply the Gaussian filtering. This is the radius of the spherical neighborhood. I will put, for example, 20 meters here. I click OK. OK, computation is complete now. And we have a new scalar field, which is uh, the height grid values, but smoothed by a Gaussian filter. If we want to see in real life what, what it means in terms of uh, these coordinates, we can now again go to Edit, Scalar Fields, and now we will export we will set the scalar field, the current scalar field, as coordinates. We will use the smoothed value of the height grid values, and we will set it to the Z coordinate here. Click OK. And what you can see now is that if I zoom a little bit, you can compare this surface with the previous one, which is this one, and the previous one is a uh, the roughness is larger than on, on the previous one than on the new one. Okay, the Z coordinates of the points have been changed. They have been replaced by the the smoothed values of the the altitudes. Gradients can show you where you have strong variations of a scalar field depending on the on the position of the points. To show you how to compute gradients, I have removed all the scalar fields from my original point set, and I will just add here, clicking on, on Edit Scalar Fields, I will just add, I will export the coordinate Z to a new scalar field. Okay, 
And if I compute the gradient of this new scalar field, what I will get is the slope, because you know that the variation of the altitude depending on the point's position, the gradient of the altitude is the slope. I click on Edit, Scalar Fields, Gradient. And you have to answer yes to this question if, you, if your scalar, scalar field is um, a distance or an altitude, for instance. So we click yes. We'll have to wait a little bit for the result. And we can see here all the, um, the gradients in our data set. And if you are looking at lower values of the gradient, you will find regions almost flat, almost horizontal at the bottom of the hill, for instance. And if you select an area with large values for the gradient, you will see the size of the mountains. It is possible to perform operations on scalar fields. And for instance, remember that in our available scalar fields, in our sample data set, we have two specific data, specific scalar fields, which are the number of returns and the return number. If you compute the return number divided by the number of returns, it, it can uh, be used to, to extract all the points, which are the last return, the last echo of um, a, a specific laser pulse. So I will perform this operation now, and I just have to click on the calculator here in the toolbar select as a scalar field wand the return number and the operation is divided by and the scalar field 2 is the um, number of returns. I can choose to update the scalar field 1 directly or I can also choose to generate a new scalar field. Okay, Here I have generated a new scalar field which has been computing by dividing SF5 by SF4. And if I select only the points with a value of 1 here, I have all the points of the data set which are corresponding to the last echo of a, of a laser pulse. In some, that, in some data sets, it can be very useful to compute um, this, um, this value because um, all points with a value of 1 are ground points. In our case, it's a little bit particular because we have very dense areas of vegetation and sometimes you only have one pulse and the ground is not reached by the laser pulse. It is possible with Cloud Compare to interpolate one scalar field from one source cloud to a destination cloud. I will show you now how to do that. So let's take our sample data set here. I click on it and I will sample it randomly. And I will keep only two millions of points. Okay. And what I do now is that I will delete the classification field from the original point cloud. I click on edit, scalar fields, delete. And now I have a not classified point cloud and a classified one. If I want to, to create a new scalar field on the not classified point cloud, I can use the classified one and interpolate the classification scalar field on the destination cloud. I select both clouds here and I click on Edit, Scalar Fields, interpolate from another entity. The source cloud is the, destin is the classified one, so I can swap here, and the destination cloud is the not classified one. I click OK. And now I choose the scalar field to interpolate. OK. And now I have to choose uh, the method to perform the interpolation. The easiest method would be using the nearest neighbor, that means that for each point in the not classified cloud, 
the the algorithm will will go and take the nearest neighbor in the classified cloud and it will attribute attributes the class of this point to the point in the destination cloud i click on ok and now if i click on my not classified point cloud i have a new scalar field a new classification scalar field which has been interpolated from the source cloud this is the end of the second part of our tutorial on scalar fields.